In this little video, we're going to create a tapered latte mug template in Affinity Designer on the iPad. Now you can do it on the desktop, of course, but this one's done on the iPad, just to make life difficult for myself. Now it can be difficult to create a design that wraps correctly around the cone shape of a latte mug. Now remember, they're a cone shape. So if you're familiar with geometry, this won't be news to you. In this tutorial, you'll learn how to create a template that fits any latte mug perfectly, with the appropriate measurements, and how to apply a design to it. Measure the height and the diameter of the bottom end of the mug and the top end. In this example, the latte mug is a blank, sold by shopsublimug.com. Now I've no relationship with them, it's just that they have a very nice Photoshop uh, template I can copy. Now of course you can't do the same things in Affinity Photo that you can in Photoshop. But they've got a template there, or a diagram of it with all the measurements, which makes life very easy. Don't forget to leave a gap of around 1 to 1.5 centimetres at each side of the mug handle and approximately a 2 to 3 millimetre gap at the top and bottom. You don't want your design right to the edges. Oh, well, you might I guess, but in this case not. The sample follows and I have put a copy on my website for download or if I haven't when you get to it, I will do. I'm starting with my own iPad Mini 5. Just to make life difficult, as I say, because the iPad Mini 5 is quite small. But this proves it can be done. Don't too worry too much about which device you do it on, even the desktop. But for this exercise, we'll stick with this one. You can do this equally well on the desktop version of Affinity Designer as well. Now you can see the, the subly mug samples there. And the one I'm using is the top one, the 17 ounce capacity mug. The height, the top diameter and the bottom diameter are both shown, 89 and 60. You'll need those measurements and probably some of the others as we work through this. Um, it's quite an exercise. These measurements become important in a moment because we need to create the arc for the curve of the template and unlike Photoshop, Affinity Photo and Designer do not have the bend option in the Warp Studio. So we have to do it the long way, we have to draw it. Hopefully it will become easier and you can begin your latte mug sublimation with confidence. Now some calculations are needed along the way. And if you're not really familiar with um, geometry, they'll be very handy. Now there's two shown there for circle calculations and cone calculators. Um, and there are a number of other very useful calculators that I've discovered. And they're listed in the description text. So um, you'll find them there. And you'll probably use them. Now, open Affinity Designer and create a new document. I'm starting with an A2 size sheet, just because it's in millimetres. Um, but I will change those measurements to 1,000 millimetres by 1,000 millimetres. This is a big diagram you're going to end up drawing. So adjust the document size. And don't worry, you won't be trying to print it out. Set it to 300 dpi with a transparent background and for what it's worth with a square, set it in landscape mode. We're going to build quite a complex structure with pie shapes, strokes and guides, all to exact measurements. This is the big problem with just warping a diagram. There's no indication of what the measurements are. So we have to do it this way. Now get ready for the exercise of your life. And you can see that outer diagram I've got there, the outer circle, the main circle, that's 960 millimetres. Sorry, 920 millimetres, a square. So that's why you need um, the very large canvas, the 1000 millimetre canvas. So we're going to use the first of these two mugs. 
Now H equals 152, that's the mug height used in the cone calculator. We'll come back to this later. There's another look at the calculator. Get your notebook ready for some calculations. We need the circumference of the top. Use the calculator and enter the diameter. Round. I've rounded it up to 280. This is the arc length for the geometry geeks. Now we're going to use that later. And in fact I shorten it considerably because what I didn't take into account there was the the fact that there's a handle on the mug and I told myself at the beginning of this to leave a gap either side well I actually reduced 280 to 217 in the final measurement but we'll get to that it's this is a fairly long exercise Now there's the, a couple of circumference results given the top and bottom diameter. And we'll use those later. We're going to use these as our circle sizes. As mentioned, they're the arc length. We'll use them later. So, before we can draw any circles, we have to work out the circumference of the circle needed for the top of the mug. Which means we start with the mug top diameter. 89 millimeters and you can see I've put that on the edge there it's just an, uh, there's two guides well there's three guides actually there's the center guide I put in the center of the document and the vertical center guides there as well now either side of that the 89 millimeters I've put a 44.5 millimeter guide Think of the mug as a cone on its side. The base is 89 millimetres and we need to find the radius of the circle. That's from the base centre to the apex of the cone. Now this is where it gets complex. Place a, oh, vertices, place a vertical guide 40 millimetres in from the left edge of your document. It's a starting point. Place a horizontal guide at the canvas centre at 500 millimetres. Remember it's a thousand millimetre square canvas so 500 millimetres is halfway. Place two further horizontal guides at 44.5 millimetres either side of the centre line. You'll see those in a moment. Where they intersect the 40 millimetre vertical guide is the diameter of the top of the mug, 89 millimetres. Now draw a stroke from each intersection in to form a cone peak where they intersect the horizontal line. See the diagram. And you can see I put a fairly heavy line in the centre there. And you can see the radius. Now what it doesn't give you is the rate what the length of that radius is, which is a bit of a nuisance, but still. I drew it out on a thousand by thousand sheet of card to measure the radius and it's 460 millimetres. I also use one of the calculators and you can get the same result from the calculators from one of the geometry calculations. But we need that radius to calculate the circumference of the big circle which forms the curve of the top and bottom of the template. We can't put the curve in or the bend as they call it in Photoshop. We can't do that in Affinity so we've got to draw it with big circles and this is a big circle. Remember 2 pi r, so that's 2 times pi times radius. 2 times 3.14 times 460 millimetres. That's the circumference of the big circle. But it's easy enough to draw because what we've got is the radius. So you drag a closed pi into shape with the center point and the edge of the circle at the mug top point. That's at the left hand edge there. That's That big circle you can see there will be the result of 2 pi r. And you know that because the ra that's the radius where that bottom radial line is, the red line. Now, you can see I drew this out on a sheet of card to measure the radius. The, on the left hand edge you can see the 89 millimeter width 
divided in half, which gives me 44.5 on either side. The right hand edge of that is the base of the mug or the cut off point of the cone. But that radial line goes from the bottom of the shape we've got there right out to the apex. And that's, if you measure it with a ruler, 460 millimeters. And that's the part we need. Now we need to place a vertical guide at the mug height point. In this case, 190 millimeters. And I think I may have got that slightly wrong. You can place another pie or open the center hole until it reaches the vertical guide, which is the bottom of the mug. Now to highlight the actual segment of the mug cone shape. The circumference of the top of the mug is 217, so we adjust the begin and end angles to suit. And you can see down the bottom there, the end angle is 217, and the start angle is 186.7. Now that's moved slightly with, with my use of the Apple Pencil, so that won't be quite 185.7. It's, it's, uh, but it sits neatly on that radius line. Colour the segment to make it visible. And we now have our latte mug template. I might add that this was reasonably difficult to get into this slideshow thing too. Okay, isolate the segment you need to copy and paste it into a new file. That makes it easier to insert your graphics. There we go. You can use Affinity Photo to open the designer file and insert your graphic and use Warp to make it look nice and wrap around properly. And you can see there I've warped it slightly so it bends around the shape of the mug. Otherwise it'll be a square peg in a round hole. Okay, so it's not an easy process, but keep practicing and soon you'll be able to make any size cone. No more sublimation limits. I hope this has been an interesting guide for you. And I know there's bits that are really obscure that will be difficult to follow. Of course, you may be better at geometry than I am. You almost certainly are. So if you have a better way of doing this, please feel free to share your ideas. <laughs> Thanks for watching. I love to think I'm helping others find new ideas. And don't forget to subscribe. Spread the love. You can find me on TikTok by scanning the tick code. This is fascinating. I'm not all that enamoured of TikTok, but it's interesting. And you have to be on TikTok, don't you?